What up, though? OG Kenny. O underscore G underscore Kenny at Retired from the Streets TV. I'm out here in the rain. So if y'all hear that rain, you know, I got a house for the kids for the weekend. So it's impossible for me to be in the studio right now because even with the door closed, they holler. The dogs is barking, right? So let me just tell y'all some things that were said from some unnamed witnesses in the story I'm about to talk about on this edition of Let's Not Forget Friday. One witness said he wasn't even fighting back. It just kept beating him until he fell and his hands dropped. One witness, another unnamed witness said that they just wiped the blood from his flashlight. He just wiped the blood from his flashlight as if nothing happened. Another one said that he was not even a threat. He was standing there and he was just holding his hand clenched. We're talking about my homeboy, Malice Green, who at 35 years old was beat to death by the hands of um, really three officers, but two were the main subject of his beating. This happened November the 5th, 1992, on the corner of 23rd Street and Warren Avenue in Detroit. Right now, to this day, you still see a fading mural of Malice Green. Um, what's, what's even crazier about the story is that the Malice Green, um, the night he was murdered, was leaving a liquor store dropping off a good friend of him him his a good friend of his uh named ralph fletcher what's crazy about that is that ralph fletcher is my big homie my og me and his sons grew up together you know as well as his as well as his daughter right um so that close of a relationship literally like somebody who's like an uncle to me was very good friends with malice green and at the time 1992 you got to think that was What's that? March the 3rd, 91 is when Malice Green was killed. So a year and eight months or so later, right? You got another black man beat to death at the hands of white officers. You know what happens after that racial hysteria. This dude literally was leaving the liquor store, right? Riding, dropping his homeboy off. When he did that, he, um, you know, when he dropped his homeboy, when he dropped Ralph off, he got about his business. But he said an unmarked car was following him. Now, oh, an unmarked car was following the police were in an unmarked car walter buds buzden and larry nevers the two officers who pulled malice green over were in an unmarked vehicle uh, what they call a booster car back then and they followed him pulled him over right well got in front of his car stopped him got on either side of his car officer neville said give me a license registration blah 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 right um and as he went for the glove box with a clenched fist never panic say hold on drop what you had you got in your hand first of all right because he suspected it to be cracked because the area that they were in was known for drug activity right so he didn't comply and when he didn't comply buzzing and nevers proceeded to get go on either side of the car and start beating him they start beating him and they punched him and they beat him hit him in the ribs hit him with flashlights right what they call justifiable force as on their behalf um ems was called because it's a struggle. He fought the car, right? Because they're fighting. You know, well, he's he's not fighting. They're beating him. And he's not complying with what they're saying. It's about, you know, every, it's a big argument to this day that Malice Green could have been alive. Hey, he just opened his fist, right? But I get what he's saying. I don't have to do nothing. I don't have to comply to a search of my vehicle because you don't have a warrant. And you're in an unmarked car. I don't know if he was thinking that, but that's what the case is. They beaten this brother. He fall out the car. On... While that's happening, two EMSs and two different vehicles arrived, right? Another, um, as well as other officers. So, other cars um, get called to the scene. Another officer in uniform, Officer Lesnow, also was seen to have been beating Malice Green, punching him in his ribs and whatnot, while Nevers and um, Buzz then continued beating him as well. Um, they would later testify in a statement to say that um, they found four different um things of crack cocaine four different crack rocks as well as a closed knife but in what in all actuality what malice green was holding in his hand was some keys and a white piece of paper so all this turmoil all this commotion all this suspicion even if you found some crack later on y'all beating this dude as if this is the response for somebody that was called out for a violent offense 
This is a non-violent offense, and y'all using brutal force to subdue this man. Beating him. Then there's three officers on one guy, man. And then you would think common sense because that Rodney King beating was worldwide. That was like the OJ trial of its time. You, you gotta understand what I'm saying. I was young, I was my in my early teens. This story was huge. So how y'all didn't get wind of this story to where y'all would think, let me chill out. Maybe because them officers got, got off. Right? So Mattis Green was handcuffed, taken to the hospital, but he had had a seizure and was dead on arrival. Yep, died at 35 years old at the hands of two officers who later were tried and convicted. Walter Busden and Larry Nevers were convicted of second degree murder and sent to prison. Now, Nevers later on got his um, his um, case overturned and ended up, um, he got his case overturned and he ended up subsequently being, getting a lesser charge of involuntary manslaughter. So, um, and then he was released in 2001. But to his death, he took it to his grave. He even wrote a book. The book was called Good Cop, Bad Verdict. In his book, he was just saying that, he, it was 500 um, pages of him saying how he was a by the book cop. He did everything by the book. And that that night was just unfortunate and um, he wished that he would have never met um, Malice Green and that he would have never died while he was on under his watch. I mean, but y'all beat that man to death. You know, um, yeah, he died at 72, 72 years old in 2013, Walter, um, well, um, Larry Nevers did. Um, this is a story, like I say, that, that rang true for me and it rang close to home because I was a young dude. I was young. And I had just experienced um, something similar with the police. You know, they took me to jail. Me and my homeboy, uh, my homeboy Vito Levatris, took us to jail for truancy around that time. You know what I mean? And then a year later, we got into an incident where they arrested a bunch of us for um, just hanging out. Tell me it was a shooting in the area. It was smacking up the homeboys, putting their hands on them, calling our mamas welfare mamas, disrespectful. At the time, I had a $1,300 shilling on, you know, and some feeler boots. That's when the feeler boots with the, with the strap was popping. And I'm talking slick to the police. I wasn't even involved in it. But I remember all the racial tension in the air, in the air period back then because of the movies we was watching, the music that was coming out, there was some fight the power and all that. And it was like, you know, I'm a young black man. I felt the way. And then... It's nothing has changed. This story was 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 important to tell today because nothing has changed, man. You know, you're not seeing all the headlines lately like you were at one point with all these police shootings and whatnot. But they're happening every day somewhere. But people are being victimized by police brutality, brute force, people using their authority and abusing it, and killing black people and indigenous people all around the world and it's not just black and indigenous people but we are the ones that is seen they look at as indisposable you know I mean well as disposable rather um so with it with it it's with a heavy heart that I still remember Malice Green you know I'm looking at this picture right here look at this see that you know one the bad looking brother right Looked like he could have been a member of an R&B group or something, you know, who, who, who knows what, no matter what his affliction was, whether he was a, a crack addict, whether he was a, a, a heroin addict, whatever his affliction or alcoholic, whatever his problem was, you got to remember Charlie Wilson was once addicted to drugs in rehab, met his wife in rehab and had a second win in his career and made more money as an independent artist than he would have ever made with the Gap Band and those residuals probably, you know what I'm saying? So who knows what that brother would have been, even at 35 years old, his life wasn't over. I'm 46 and, and started my life over as a YouTuber, <laughs> in, in essence. Now I didn't even look at it like that. And somebody said, bro, you a YouTuber. I'm like, damn, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, I guess I am. But I love y'all, man. This is another edition of Let's Not Forget Friday. Let's not forget Miles Green. Let's put our prayers up and send good energy out there to the surviving family members and loved ones of everybody that we know of and even the ones we don't know of who's fell victim or who's lost their life at the hands of police brutality. And with that, I want y'all all to have a safe 
weekend. I'll be back at y'all uh, tomorrow for sure, and Sunday for um, Church Crime Sunday again, and Monday. You know, I'm coming every day with y'all at y'all these um with these. I, hey, I, you got to think a week ago, I had 900 some subscribers, barely getting a thousand. I'm at almost 1800 as of today. I love the you know, and it's only just and this. I haven't done no promotion. I ain't did no marketing. All I did was speak from the heart and keep it 100 with y'all. And I'm gonna keep doing that. Y'all be safe. I love y'all. OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny at Retired from the Streets TV. Tell everybody you know and love to hit the channel and subscribe, like, comment, share, hit the notification bell. And until then, next time y'all be safe and I'm out.